Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button. I'm a granite sculptor. Got the rubber mold made. Mother's done. Mold's evacuated. Got St. Francis over here on the side. On a smaller stone, smaller model, it's usually not a big problem to take most or all of the rubber off without deconstructing the model because this model was larger. I decided to go ahead and pull it out. But, uh, you know, if we went careful, we could leave it together. I need this clay, so I just want to get it evacuated and put it back in the bucket and salvage it so I can start using it again for the next project. So, but you can see that, you know, aside from him being taken apart, this silicon mold doesn't bugger up any of the details. The problem you'll have with a silicon mold is you'll break the mother and then the mother won't be there to hold it in rigid form when you do your casting work. So first thing I'm going to do, we took this off and washed it a little bit because um, it had some dirt that was on the clay because the clay was old and been sitting around for a few years. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and chunk him up and throw him back in the bucket, clean off my workspace, and then we'll do some casting. Doing a little bit of testing with this. It's next day. Everything's nice and dry. It's starting to dry out. Uh, this will go through a phase where it's hot and it's damp. And the more it dries, the lighter it gets because water's drying off and evaporating. I wanted to pick it up and make sure that the lumber in here was nice and solid. I can pick this up just by these outriggers. This is about as large as a single piece should be it gets to the point where you can't handle it it's it's detrimental to, to the positive because you'll break the positive trying to get the heavy mother off um, but fabricating this out of two pieces if i split it down the middle or four pieces i mean i could split it down the middle now and probably bolt it together and be just fine but um this work is about getting it done this is down and dirty you got to hurry up and finish it and you want to do it just enough <laughs> that it produces a predictable result and doesn't fail. But if I can do it and produce a result for two or three hundred dollars, then spending six or eight hundred dollars on it isn't necessarily practical. So um, you'll have to find that happy medium. It's like I can do a two gallon bucket of plaster, no problem. If I do more than two gallons at a time, it's, it's beyond what I can successfully accomplish. So uh, it's good to see that as this is lifting up, I don't know if you can tell, the rubber is falling off on its own, which is great. You don't want the keys, that, the register blocks that you put on to create draft that lock it in. So if you have anything that is a problem, you can always cut them one way or even two ways and that'll help them collapse, but they still will register where the, the rubber mold needs to be. So, uh, but it's, it's a, uh, Nice to have this to be able to flip it over and everything looks good. So we'll uh, clean this up, probably release it. We've got to do a support armature like I talked about to go inside here that'll be similar to what this is. It'll hopefully just be embedded though. And uh, as soon as we get that done, I'll mix up some plaster and we'll cast St. Francis. That's our release now. And you don't really have to release this, it'll let go on its own. But this is one more chance to make sure that the silicon mold is pushed completely into the rubber. Into the silicon mold pushed into the mother. There was one spot where it was a little high, and you can work it out. Made a quick armature. To sit in there. We'll support it in the rubber so it's somewhat centered. Just cut a dovetail on the bottom and uh, it will uh, should be really good. So, uh, and this just will help take some of the strain off of 
the actual plaster because the plaster isn't that strong. When you start your plaster, it's really important. There's you got to think about things that will lock and key. I did relieve around the uh, dove's head. I cut two or three slits in the rubber. You got to think about where air can be trapped because that's a regular problem uh, when you do plaster to make sure that all your undercuts get get completely covered and that they get filled and any air is displaced. Um, that's the big risk when you do a waste mold is you've only got one opportunity to do the mold. So just on the slim chance of ever making a mistake, which does happen. Um, but with something like this, it's not a big deal. You can manage it, and if you do have a failure with the rubber mold, you can run another one. And that's really the trade-off, the big benefit of doing a silicon mold versus a waste mold, is you've got an opportunity to uh, not have to redo the whole job. Because you'll have an air bubble under his chin, you'll have the dove's head will be a void, um, those are the those are typical things and so so this first batch is pretty wet because I really want it to get on everything and that'll help with subsequent coats make sure that they get into everything too um, I'm just going to kind of stay off the edge because I didn't put a dam around it once again it's a it's a time and money thing you can do it, it's extra time and extra money, and uh, I want to get done, I don't want to spend any more money on this than I have to, and uh, that's part of being practical, and that's part of making your studio profitable if you're going to do this and try to sell work, you've got to be well aware of what everything costs, and then as plaster thickens up, I can do more out on the edges up around the flint and get everything coated up really well. We'll probably run at least three three batches for this because I want to cover this and then I'll run some screws into it because I'll know where it is in order to have them hang with. Once this dries up a little bit more, then I can Break it up, throw it in. Okay, I think I'm down to the last batch. Um, making sure everything slips or grabs really well is important. So I'm taking this fresh batch that I just mixed, um, and I'm just wetting the surface. It's pretty pretty firm. It's not hard, hard, but it's very, very firm. And this will help keep it a little more viable while this plaster kicks. Because uh, you usually need to make sure you've got enough work for your plaster so that whatever you mix, you use completely. Because one of the worst things to do is to have your plaster go off in the bucket and then you can't clear your bucket and if you're mixing plaster at that point and trying to actually do your model, do your pours, boy, it's a train wreck. So, but this should, this isn't foolproof, but it's the best we've got. And then I can take this plaster as it really thickens up. I'll wait till it's it'll pretty much stand up on its own, and then uh, finish painting it on. It'll take a few minutes. Okay, this is firmed up pretty good to where it'll hang on the vertical. And.
So we'll get this all wrapped up. It's good to be a little heavy right here because the wing is there. anything else that's stressing but that wing is would be a weak spot and that's it we'll clean this up then it's off to trim trees from the storm blue down while I'm waiting for this to dry and cure and harden up and there's there's two ways to look at it if you take it apart when it's a little soft or a little green you've got a chance to slip things and repair them just like I'm doing now and that's normally what you do this is so big and so heavy that I'm just trying to cast it strong enough that uh, Hopefully it won't need any repairs. Uh, you know, we may lose a dove's head or his fingertips. Um, and if we do, I'll just have to live with it. Um, but uh, normally we'd let this go a little while and flip it over and then try to unmold it when it was still pretty hot and still damp. Because if you wait till it's completely dry, uh, you can use liquid nails to glue plaster, but it isn't ideal. And uh, so that's pretty much it. Now we'll wait, like I said, through the magic of video. We'll wait and see how it turns out. So. Okay, I think it's time to turn this over. It's pretty hard uh, to resolve the unevenness of this. It's easy to use something soft. So I got a, just a bag full of shavings from my wood planer, just a big bean bag. And so we'll flip this over. Try not to get caught on the back. While I separate this, I'm going to let the magic of video happen. So hang on so we're not just getting bored watching me do this. What I had to do was take a hammer and a chisel. Just go around the edge gently here where it was overlapped a little bit. Break it down to the rubber. And I haven't, I just put the crane on here and started. You see it's lifting it right off. So, just run it right up. It's all off there. that the dove's head is the big issue. That'll lock 
across right there by the neck, but that's no big deal. Try to get this out from under his chin without a disaster. I made a couple of slits by the dove's head. And it looks like it worked. Now this line here is actually a line from the mold in the rubber. Same thing on the other side, it's not a crack. There's a little bit of a loss on the end of the bird's beak. That really isn't an issue. And uh, there's still some dirty stuff here. But uh, what I'll do is we'll let this cure and we'll gesso it. We'll go around this edge and square it up. Not too worried about this thin spot here. But uh, that's it. And if I needed to point this, which is, you know, normally the only reason I cast a model. Um, you cast it in plaster or hide the cowl or whatever, so you got a durable model. Point from clay is a risky proposition because if the clay deforms, you're out of luck. And by doing a silicon mold, if I had to cast another one of these, if this uh, there was some issues, so like a storm went through, and if something had happened and this was damaged, um, for whatever reason, then I could cast another one and not miss the beat. So uh, small losses like the tip of the beak for a working model is no big deal. Um, that's something you just resolve when you're carving, but there's a lot of information in that model. So uh, we'll uh, do just a little bit more video, but that's pretty much it. So let's say you cast a model of hardware, silicone, and plastic. Okay, I took a knife, just a old knife that went around the edge and squared it up a little bit, evened it out. Now I've uh, put on a little bit of gesso, which is basically just a white latex paint. You can use glue, um, but this will provide a, it'll seal the surface um, here in the studio. It'll help it, um, it will limit like mold growth and that if you get any dampness or humidity. And uh, the studio isn't exactly climate controlled, so this will uh, help it stay nice and white. And I like doing this because when I'm gonna do a model, when I produce it in clay, obviously it's a matte finish and it's got somewhat of a sheen because it's oily but it's basically a dull gray finish and it handles light a certain way. When I turn around and cast it in plaster it basically inverts a lot of the values, changes a lot of value, changes a lot of the detail and how you see it, what stands out and what doesn't, especially when you gesso it. And so then when I start to go into granite I can understand if I need to make an adjustment or change something in order for it to produce the right visual effect so it demonstrates properly in the cemetery. And so that's a big benefit that you don't always get because you've seen the shapes, you've seen the, everything that you've made in different, almost like in negative, and that helps when you want something to be subdued or accentuated, it helps you understand what you need to change. So, uh, that's another reason, besides practicing the shape, before you get to the final medium, um, being able to see it basically in negative, in, the, in three dimensions, really helps you understand 
whether it's going to work right or whether it's not, when you get down to those last little bits of detail to uh, make something pop and make it look like it's just not stone, like it's flesh, or that it's floral and it's really delicate, that's, it's not a trick, it just works. It helps you understand what you're doing better. And if you want to just wing it, go for it. Um, I do that too on occasion, but when jobs have to be good, and I, at this point I want everything I do to be better than anything I've done before, this is one way to accomplish it. This is basically the culmination of this video series. We've done five videos. Uh, we went through and uh, showed you how to prepare the clay. We did a silicon mold with hardware store silicon mold. Uh, and then uh, with a hydrocal mother. And we used, I top of my head trying to remember, we used uh, $100 or so. You know, we used a dozen bottles of, of silicone. We used quite a quite a bit of silicone, and uh, ended up using about two, a little over two bags, maybe three bags, two and a half strong to three bags for the mother. Uh, we released everything with uh, with naphtha soap, just laundry soap, no big deal. Uh, it isn't really necessary, but it did help it come off fairly clean. There's a little bit of residue, but nothing's really stuck. I'll wash this. We did a, uh, then we did the mother with a, a wooden chassis to support it and uh, ended up being pretty heavy. So we used the crane to flip it over. Because we constructed the model from the back, was able to take out just a handful of screws around the perimeter of the, of the niche and a few uh, pieces in the middle that were helping retain the, the, ply, the clay to the wood and uh, it just popped right off and I was able to evacuate the clay, clean the mold up, release it again for the plaster and then pour a positive. So we poured a positive, we went, this is, this is fairly close to where the rubber is, it might be a little short. Had one loss here on the corner where I didn't put quite as thick right here right here on the top is, as I did, but I had all this mass. I wasn't as worried about that. I wanted to make sure the sides were good because I won't be handling it up there. So uh, got them all done, gessoed up. The gesso is nice to seal. It breaks out the white. It really cleans it up. Uh, it'll, it'll seal it, keep it from uh, having issues with, with dirt or mold as much here in the studio. I've got some models that were gessoed over 15 plus years ago and they still look great. Uh, if you're pointing, this also helps when you when you mark your points. You mark, take your red pencil, and mark a point, uh, or your whatever pencil. If you use a regular lead pencil, um, but it will uh, mark better on the gesso. And if you have a mistake, you can either erase it or you can put a little more gesso over it if you need to change your points. Or if you point it again subsequently, that's another reason. Because if you point it again, you don't want all those points on there, not knowing what's new and what's old. So uh, we had a little bit of a loss on the end of the bird's beak. No big deal. Fingertips are good. Nose is good. Chin is good. Other feather detail is good. Everything. So um, and that represents a four inch deep niche. Four foot tall niche that's, that's four inches deep. So uh, that's how we do a waste mold. I mean a silicon mold instead of a waste mold here to do a working model. And uh, this will go serve as part of the portfolio. The job was already cut and sold. It was just a direct carve job, but I'll keep this. The drapery is significant. That's very standard protocol for the genre. And so there's good information on that. So that's about it. Um, but appreciate you hanging in there. It's been a long slog through some of these videos. I know they're, they're long, but uh, there's only so many ways to make this short. I think time lapse is... is uh, disrespectful it makes uh <laughs> just this isn't a cartoon process this is serious but uh this gives you an idea on what you can do uh and we've got the opportunity to pull several more poles there's a couple of tears but nothing significant 
so we could cast many of these and tweak them to, you know, capture that bird's beak or whatever. I'm sure we could resolve that if we really wanted to. So, uh, once again, my name's Clint Button here at Carolina Sculpture Studio, showing you how to do silicon molds, reusable silicon molds for working models or short production runs uh, using hardware store silicone and gypsum product. So, thanks for coming in.